All right, the next step is uh, this exhaust pipe. Obviously, that's too long. So I've got to cut it to fit on the exhaust uh, back here and then exit out the side here. So I'm going to go ahead and make some marks and do a little cutting. And that's what we'll do. So cut it right there. We'll do the first one first and then I'll remark it again. This Chicago electric uh, cutoff uh, saw that I bought from Harbor Freight years and years ago. I, I've had it for years and uh, I'm still on the original blade there. I've put it through a lot of use and it's, uh, it's held up pretty good. That makes pretty clean cut. first cuts done this this right here is a through hole fitting for boats uh, for an exhaust so we're gonna go ahead and mount that uh, first and then I'll uh, make the measurements to make the cut okay let's uh, first cut ourselves a pilot hole then a hole saw Boy, <laughs> brand new case and I'm drilling holes all over this thing. Ah, perfect fit. This is a Lennox uh, one and a half inch uh, hole saw. Nice tight fit. I'm using uh, all stainless steel hardware here. With the extra line that's left over, uh, you can go ahead and just slide that in place and uh, it gives you another 12 15 inches to get the exhaust away um, from the intake on the other side well folks my plan uh, is to go ahead and mount another um, set of uh, these adapters here uh, on the case uh, the only issue I have is uh, this hole placement is a little bit lower and I've got to carve out some of the case right here so this will fit flat so uh i wish i could have mounted the drilled the hole up a little higher so uh, if you're going to do you a case i said you know you might want to take into account this and uh make sure the hole's up a little bit higher so right now i'm going to go ahead and uh grind out some of that case right there so this fits in flat Well, with a little bit of modification, uh, well, uh, to be honest, a lot of modification, I was able to get this uh, intake uh, manifold attached. Uh, I can just leave it as is, or later on I can go ahead and, and add uh, some vent hose to it, and I can run this up into the, uh, for intake, to recycle the, uh, the warmed air inside the uh, RV. Or I can just leave it like that. Okay, uh, what we got going now is uh, the heater runs off of 12 volt um, power uh, to run the, the fuel pump and the fan and whatnot in there. 
So I've got to be able to deliver uh, some 12 volt power um, to the unit. Also, the uh, the heaters come with a, a small uh, control panel, and this is how you uh, control the, the speed on and off of the uh, heater. And this will be located on the inside. So there's only three wires that is gonna come from the unit. So I've got uh, two wires for the 12 volt, the positive and negative, and then three volts here. So what we're gonna do is make a cable that has uh, five, five uh, leads going uh, from the heater uh, into my trailer. Let me show you how we're gonna do that. So these are uh, cable connectors uh, for basically, I think they were invented or, or used primarily in the uh, music business for like speaker wires and that type of thing. And th th this, this is uh, how this is gonna go. This goes on the cable and then it's wired up uh, with this piece right here. It'll be wired up and then this will slide through and then this will protrude out, out this and then one of these units will be uh, in the, uh, it'll be on the heater and there'll also be one on the trailer. So this basically just snaps into the place there and twists and, and locks it into place. And it's just a quick disconnect. And that'll have your power feed and the control wires uh, to control your heater from the inside. So our first step will be uh, cutting back the sheathing on this cable and then expose the individual uh, conductors in there. And then we'll go ahead and connect it to, to this piece right here. Now this particular cable, I could not find any five uh, conductor cable. So I ended up getting seven conductor cable, uh, which I have right here and it will work just perfect. I just have two conductors that I don't use. This particular um, connector series here uh, doesn't rely on any soldering. You can just uh, strip the wires back and then put them in the uh, holes there and then there's a uh, little set screws uh, that you tighten up. Now what I'm going to use is uh, these ferrules I bought this ferrule kit and uh, it comes in all different sizes and uh, the wire that I have here is 14 gauge so we'll be using the little blue ones and uh, you crimp you crimp these little ferrules onto the wire and then these will fit right into those spots and then tighten them down and uh, it's just a little bit neater than using just the, the bare wires there so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw me a diagram of the connectors here and determine uh, which wires I'm going to put where. And uh... The way these ferrules work, you just strip back your wire, then take your ferrule, slide it over, and those bare wires go up into this area right here. And you have this tool. You can see the tool right there. Take your tool, put it over the, then just squeeze. And then you have a nice little crimped ferrule there. Nice tight connection. And you just don't have the bare wires there. Works pretty good. All right, I've got the, uh, all the wires uh, stripped, the ferrules uh, installed. And uh, now it's just a matter of putting the rest of the uh, plug on. Okay, the next step will be to put the casing uh, over this. You just take this, and there's a slot right there, so you know where to put it. Take that, push it through. Okay, I've got my cable put together. And the way it works is this will be uh, the receptacle, uh, one end in the trailer and the other end in the heater. And you just push this together and twist and it's locked in place. And there you have your connection. So what we'll do is go ahead and do the other end of the cable 
and then we'll take uh, the receptacle and mount it into the uh, heater box. All right, I've got uh, both connectors uh, wired up. Uh, you can't see it with this camera, but each one of these uh, prongs here, contact points, uh, are all numbered. Their uh, numbering scheme is the, uh, the outside connectors are uh, have a number with a minus sign, and then the, uh, the inner four there have uh, positive numbers. So what, I've, what I need to do now is make sure that I have all the wires connected, uh, that they'll be the same. Uh, my hot wire for my battery on this plug will be exactly the same over on this plug. So what I do is I use my continuity meter, and let's go ahead and do that to double check and make sure we have the right uh, connections. So on my continuity meter, I set it on a continuity uh, setting. And uh, when you have a completed circuit, it'll show up as all zeros on my continuity meter. So what I can do is just pick the a prong on this plug and the plug on this one. And I watch my meter and I see that it zeroes out. And so those are the exact same uh, connections. So I just do that all the way around. And I check every single one and to make sure that uh, the plugs match up. So yes, they, they do all match up. And it's uh, so now I'm, I'm assured that when I get it wired up that when I plug it in, I'm not gonna have the wires crossed. All right, I've decided on uh, where I'm gonna place my uh, input receptacle, where I'll plug in uh, my power cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and drill a pilot hole. got a specialty uh, bit here um, not exactly what you call these but I, I got a complete set of these in different sizes this happens to be uh, uh, this needs a it's a 30 30 and a half millimeter and I've got a just happen to have a 32 millimeter drill so we'll go ahead and cut that hole out Morning, folks. Uh, back in the shop this morning. Uh, Going to hit this project uh, another day. Yesterday, I was making a cut uh, for the electrical connection, and never before has the term uh, "measure twice, cut once" uh, had more importance than it did in this situation. I don't know what I was thinking, but I cut that hole and then realized I stuck it in the wrong place. So I had to do some uh, repair work here. So it looks ugly as hell, but. Um, uh, that's just the way things happen in the shop sometimes. So I was able to use some uh, JB plastic weld and make a repair. It's ugly as hell, uh, but uh, it's functional. Let me show you what I did. So right here is where I made that initial cut, and you can see it was it was way off. There was actually behind this was uh, the heater uh, portion was there, and uh, so I had to. Uh, move the plug over to this area right here. So I took the uh, portion that I cut out and put it back in there and then sealed it up with some JB weld. And there's a lot more on the other side, but anyways, it's, it's functional. So we have our electrical plug right here and the cable that we made. And so it'll just be a, a simple matter of pushing the cable in, twisting it, and it's locked in place. To remove, there you go. And I'll have a, a, a matching plug on the RV to uh, plug into the power in the RV and the controller.